Welcome to the Evox Ambulance course. This course is designed to provide education for those that are going to be driving ambulances. This is separate from the fire department's Evox course. There's another course that you would have to take if you wish to drive the fire apparatus. There's 10 modules or 10 lessons in this course. This is the introduction. Overall, this course is going to cover things such as how to operate um, in normal mode, some legal uh, aspects to EMS, how to talk on the uh, radios and use other forms of communication, the different types of ambulances we have, how to inspect to make sure our ambulances are ready, how to figure out how to get from point A to point B. We will talk about um, a little bit of high-risk driving, but we will not be doing any high-speed driving in this course, and safety is always the first thing uh, when you're considering driving the ambulance. Module A provides the knowledge. Module B, which is actually very short, will provide a little bit of practice. And then Module C is supposed to be on-the-job training, which will provide your true performance. And wherever you go to work, your supervisor will have checklists that they will go over for your Module C part of the EBOC course, which is your performance part. So again, Module A is what you're going to be learning in these videos and in the classroom. Module B is what we'll be doing when we drive the ambulance. There's a series of 10 exercises you have to drive through and you can't hit a cone. Uh, module C will then be what you do when you get to work and use the, the checklist that your supervisor has and they will go over that with you wherever you go to work. <clears throat> As I said earlier, we're not going to do any high-speed driving. It's just kind of kind of too bad. That's kind of fun. My first EVOC course, which was a long, long time ago, we spent a Saturday driving the ambulances, and then we spent a Sunday in old squad cars on a closed race course driving through cones, and that was that was a lot of fun. The only time I've ever lost the rims off of my, my vehicle was, was during EVOC, but we do not do that in this course. We'll be driving everything at normal speeds. In fact, when you go through the exercises, you'll be able to drive them at whatever speed you want. So things that go with this, and all this can be found in Moodle. Your participant manual is in there. It's a large PDF file. You're welcome to download it. You're welcome to print it. It's like two or 300 pages long, so make sure you have a lot of paper. Um, we used to check these out, or used to make these buy these, but that was just an added expense. So we put it in a Moodle, and you can look through it. It's not a bad resource. There is also a summary of it that I created as a, a PDF document in Moodle, and that will help you a lot on the test. So I highly recommend that you download or use that, uh, or at least read through that. Um, in the participant manual, they have um, all these lessons and a little description of them and some of the things that are, that are in it. Um, in addition, we'll be going over some of the protocols that Alabama has set up for ambulance operators. Um, the manual also has the hand signals in them if you want to look through those. Um, usually about the only two we, we use are keep coming back and then stop. Um, there's also a checklist if you want to inspect an ambulance, but every service has their own version of this, and you'll get familiar with that when you go to work. In fact, when you do clinicals, they'll show you what the checklist is, and you'll go over it as you inspect the ambulance. <clears throat> there's a glossary in there if there's any terms you, you want to look up. And there's also a link to other references. Um, remember that this EVOC course was created in 1995, so it's 22 plus years old at this point. Um, so these additional resources and the glossary and all that, this stuff is getting pretty old. We are looking to update it soon, but it comes from the national um, level. And the state has said we're just going to follow along with whatever is put out from the national level. So until... Uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration wants to update this course. Alabama is going to keep using this course, even though it's getting a little old. <clears throat> this course is really designed for everyone. If you're going to drive an ambulance in Alabama, you have to take this course. Whether it's a big city, small city, rural area, urban area, whether you're getting paid for it, if you're a volunteer, if you are going to operate or drive an ambulance, you have to have this course. Um, in the participant manual, you'll see these little things. Um, icons along and these are what they mean. You're supposed to take notes at a certain point and I'm supposed to ask questions and you're supposed to respond at certain points. Don't worry if you don't know these. Now one of the things that will happen um, when you apply for your license is they will ask to do a uh, or you'll sign permission for them to do a driving check, a medical check. 
Um, of course, you have to know how to operate an ambulance. So you have to provide a copy of your EVOC certificates, um, and you have to make sure that you are mentally, physically fit, and, and fairly clean and ready to do the job. <clears throat> so when you send your stuff off to the state, they will do this um, motor vehicle check. Um, when you go to work at an ambulance service, the insurance company that provides the insurance for the ambulance service will also provide a, a motor vehicle record check, an accident check, and a license check just to see if you are a decent driver in your car. There's a lot of correlation to how well you drive your personal vehicle as to how well you drive an ambulance. So if you've kind of proven that you are a very, very poor driver by being in a couple of fender benders and running a few stop signs and having some tickets on your record and too many points, you will not be driving an ambulance. Um, don't come to me and ask me um, what all you've, or tell me what all you've done and then ask me if you're going to be able to drive an ambulance. I don't make that decision. That's the insurance company in the state. And I would prefer just not to know how bad of a driver you might be. In addition, you can have to have a physical done to see if you have any problems, because obviously if you have something like seizures or diabetes that you may lose consciousness, we don't want you driving an ambulance unless those things are under control. Um, things like the condition I have with CMT, I have to make sure that it doesn't affect my legs too much and I can still um, press the gas pedal and the brake pedal and there's even a, a driver's test that I can take uh, when I get to that point um, when they feel like I might be an impairment. Um, if you have any sort of um, drug or alcohol dependency, <clears throat> they may not want you to be driving an ambulance um, because they're kind of worried that you'll be impaired. I can guarantee that if you're ever in a wreck with an ambulance, even if it's something minor like you back into a mailbox, um, you will be doing a uh, drug screening um, for work. They'll, they'll do that just to make sure that you're not under the influence of anything. <clears throat> there is a written test. It's a computer test. And after you've completed all these videos and you've um, we've completed the classroom portion of this course, you will be able to take that. You will schedule that through the testing lab. Um, every once in a while we may be able to do it um, in, in class, but it's, it's going to be on your own time. So either get with one of the uh, EMS instructors and we can set it up for you, or you can schedule a time at the Northwest Shoals Testing Lab, either the Muscle Shoals Campus or the Phil Campbell Campus. The driving portion, um, you'll have to complete all 10 of those exercises without hitting a cone, and in another video I'll go over those. And then when you get to work, uh, wherever whatever service you work for, you have to do your on-the-job evaluation, and they'll go through a series of checklists with you. In addition, you have to keep your regular driver's license up to date, and this is one of the things that's different with EMS than maybe other fields. If you end up in an accident or you get a speeding ticket or something with your personal vehicle, you will have to report it to your supervisor because they will have to report it to the insurance company and see if they still will keep you on the insurance as a ambulance driver. If you get too many points, you're in a wreck, or the insurance company says, no, we're no longer going to insure you, then you will not be driving. So remember what you're doing in your personal life and your own vehicle may affect what's happening to you at work. You have to keep yourself fairly physically and, and mentally fit. Um, so, you know, this is a physical job. We're lifting patients, going up and down embankments, carrying equipment and climbing in and out of the ambulance. You have to make sure that you can do the job. And if you have some sort of like shoulder or back injury that prevents you from driving, well, we don't need to be driving an ambulance. We will have to do continuing education. That's part of EMS in general. So every two years, you will have to do an EVOC refresher. If you take a full EVOC refresher classroom-based course, it's about four hours. Some people just come to our regular EVOC class and sit through four hours of that, um, or you can do some sort of online blended learning um, part of uh, refresher training. In general, most services do not require that you go through the driving course again, although that is an option that they can do if they want. So did you get enough sleep last night? Get your seven, eight hours like you're supposed to? Any injuries that might prevent you from being able to operate the vehicle well? Um, you've heard about my stories with, with taking some Benadryl and how groggy I am the next day. So even though that's a um, over-the-counter medication, um, I still would not take that and go drive an ambulance because I don't feel like I could do it safely. Um, <clears throat> and if you're sick, stay home. We don't want to give that to your partner. You don't want to give it to your patient. Your patients are already sick, already have other issues, and they, um, they don't need to get whatever you may have. Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, I know a lot of times we don't have like sick leave, so you may not get paid for it, but it's the safest thing to do for everybody. 
Is there anything that's distracting you? Um, we've all probably done this at some point in time. You've driven to the store and you've pulled into the parking lot and you don't really remember how you got there. You were thinking about other things. Um, hopefully you stopped at all the red lights along the way. Um, that's not good to do when you're driving an ambulance. You've got to really, really focus on what you're doing. So all these other things that may be distracting you, um, you, you, you have to put them out of your mind for those moments when you're driving, that, that five, ten minutes when you're driving the ambulance to the scene and then the time it takes to get to the hospital, you really have to be focused on what you're doing. <clears throat> I harp on this enough, I think, in classroom, but you, you got to look professional, you got to look the part. And if you're not looking professional, you're not going to be taken seriously. It just reflects poorly on our profession in general. So make sure your uniforms are neat and clean, shirts are tucked in. Um, and make sure you keep your uniforms clean so at the end of every shift they get washed or if you get something on them, you change into a second uniform so they can get washed. Um, you just don't want to bring that stuff home. You don't want to get whatever um, infections your patients may have. Keep your ambulance clean, and this is something we probably do not do a good enough job. Um, at least once a shift, we ought to spray everything down with a disinfectant. Make sure you're cleaning your stethoscope and your pens and the... Um, your, even your cell phone, because a lot of times we'll pull that out to make a, a quick call to the hospital and we have our gloves on and whatever was on the glove is not on your phone. So stethoscopes, pens, phones, pen lights, um, all that stuff, make sure you clean. Um, now with your ambulance, make sure that things like pulse oxes and blood pressure cuffs and stethoscopes and the stretcher and the cot and all the surfaces get cleaned down on a regular basis, preferably after every patient. And when you're driving around, make sure all your equipment is properly secured and stored. It would be really bad to have a $25,000 monitor come flying off the shelf and hit the floor and break into multiple pieces. Um, I have seen that, um, not on my ambulance fortunately, but I have seen that happen to other people driving on multiple occasions. In fact, I know one person who three shifts in a row managed to get the monitor knocked off the shelf and crashed to the floor. So in one in three days, he went through $75,000 worth of equipment. Not cool. So make sure everything's secured. Um, what would have been even worse is if that monitor had fallen off the shelf and hit the patient in the head, because then we could have had um, severe injuries to the patient or the provider in the back. As I said earlier, you're going to have to do an EVOC refresher. Um, this is done at least every two years, um, and this is on top of all of the other continuing education that you're going to have to do um, <clears throat> for all of the um, all of your, your EMT. So that's that's usually about 30 hours of con ed over two years. All right. Any questions, make sure to contact me, ask me those, and always, always drive safely.